Hey everybody, I'm Steve from Mr. Steve 3D, and I'm gonna show you the one-click solution to damage in Blender with the Cracks Pro. This is a whole new upgrade. It's not using simulation nodes, and I'm gonna show you this Suzanne and some other mesh objects. It works on everything. It works with modifiers. It's gonna really enhance your workflow, and that's what it's all about anyways. So now that you are gonna have a more powerful workflow inside of Blender, you need to do that with presets. You don't want to sit there and try to adjust 20, 30 different node group parameters. So I bundle it all into just one click for you guys. Then you can make your own personal adjustments. Let's jump on into the Cracked V4 Pro and learn just a little bit. I'll take two minutes to show you guys how I make a preset and then we'll wrap it up with the ease of use of this add-on and how it's going to get, help you meet your goals, your milestones, and finish projects early. Let's jump right in. Condensing this node group down to one button with presets and a few adjustments was not easy, but I did it. And so now you guys are going to have a sensible UI that will just give you the option. So Cracks Original is here with the simulation nodes. And it's important to note that it is still there, only it is now called Legacy Cracks. So let's go ahead and let's just delete this off so you guys can see it. And now you have legacy cracks. This is the old version. You click that, you get this, and it will crack your mesh. Let's just zoom in. Let's give a little bit more YouTube compression to work with. A little bit from YouTube to work with on its compression. Uh, so now you would have the cracks presets, which are here. You could do level one cracks. And of course, shift left arrow brings you back uh, so you can see what's going on. Now, on this, you actually have invisible cracks, and that's gonna be for both. But if you click invisible cracks, it's, it's still there. That's just for you to animate and kind of bring it in. So like there's no crack and then there is a crack. So you guys get the idea. Then of course you can go through the different um, crack levels here. Then there's different things like the earthquake, which is pretty cool and then the shatter and abstract cracks. I like the abstract cracks. You'll get some varying results depending, and then you can do the thing, separate the loose parts, very cool. Now, for the new uh, V4, this one is a lot more powerful and it has a lot more use case because it's gonna work on pretty much everything. It's not going to interrupt your other workflows like the simulation nodes did because it'll simulation with physics and a remesh, bog down the computer, crash, no good. Uh, that was some of the results I was getting. So now with this, and I have not made all the presets, I'm literally in, I did just smack my microphone. I'm in the process of building the presets for this. You guys can have it, it'll be on Blender Market. You'll have two options, mesh bullion, which is the best way to get results. But if your mesh is convex by nature, it looks more convex, it's what it is, you could choose convex hull. You may or may not see an actual change there, or you can click auto convex. That is just gonna be what's there. Now for the pro cracks here, I've only got invisible cracks um, on there for now, and I didn't actually finish it. Uh, level one and two. So if you just move the arrow here, you will be able to see level one cracks, and just so you can see a change here, I uh, would go to level two, and that's obviously way too big. None of it's refined yet, but it's going to be. So let's go ahead and knock that out. I'm gonna hide this just so we can focus. And I, you can use this on any mesh, does not matter. I'm gonna do a primitive. This is not gonna be like before. So you could just click Crack It Pro. Give it a second. It's gonna drop an empty into the scene. You can go here and you can grab the empty. Uh, so now from here, you would be able to control recursion effects and shatter damage and isolate it in certain areas. Uh, pretty cool. Now with this selected, that's the only way because otherwise you'll get errors that you'll have your UI show up. And of course, if you want, you could pin your workflow over here. Uh, you cannot pin this because these are in the UI. Now, count is important. You have a really high count to begin with, you're going to lag out. So you don't want that. So maybe we'll bring it down to something like 10 for now and then you can make it more advanced later, but just so you can kind of get the idea of how this is gonna work. And if you're not seeing a lot, you can bring up the iterations 
and the recursion factor, okay? Do that, now you'll be able to move the uh, mesh around a touch more. And at this point, you would bring up the count to see if you can get more. There we go, so 20 is good. Just figure out what works best on your PC. And then you can shatter in um, different areas of the mesh based on the empty and where it's placed. Now, the minimum and maximum here, this is how we're controlling the gap, okay? So I'm gonna bring this back down to something manageable and we'll bring the iterations down. Three or four is pretty good. You've got a fast PC, ramp it up, no problem. Uh, so right here, you could change the gap for that particular area. Uh, you could change all of it if you want. If you are on mesh bullion, um, this will work nicely. And let's just say we figured this is what we want. We bring up our recursion. We're gonna bring this to 25, which is a little high, but it's gonna look really good. And now that's gonna load in. And from here, the uh, very next thing we do is we can explode this area if we want. So we will now click explode. It's going to add another node group underneath the Trax Pro called Exploded View. It's going to automatically pin to last, otherwise you won't see it, so try not to change that. Um, so now that we've got that, we have exploded scale that popped up. It may not be a good idea to scrub that factor or uh, rather that float value. It would be a better idea to say put like 0.1 and see how your PC handles it and it will explode out. Uh, this really isn't too bad. I could scrub through just a little bit, but I'm going to be very careful. Uh, yeah, so there you go. So now you can do explode effects here as well. And as it goes, this is going to get a lot more advanced. There will be actual curvature and things like that to the cracks. And you can still achieve it. It's just kind of difficult right now. Um, and those are going to be in the presets. Do not worry. You're not going to have to think about any of this stuff. Now let's check out uh, some of the operators here. And there's there's so much more to this, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to simplify it. Uh, so now... Over here in my add-on dev, I'm gonna go to Pro Presets. And what I've done is I've pulled properties from the Cracks Pro, like the count, the different things that I want, like the minimum, maximum for the gap, and I make that into a function. And then each one of these functions is going to be controlled by an enum map, and it will update every time this enum updates. What enum is that? Well, we've got an enum switcher. This is the logic that allows me to create a custom string property tied to the buttons. And then this is the actual enum that is switching previous or next, which is right here. So if I was switching this and I don't want to do it in that state, I'll bring this back down to 10. And then I would uh, go back and forth and scrub through those as I see fit. Then over here in the actual presets, I've got the count. So do note that when you do click this, it's going to reset it back to a manageable count so you don't crash your PC. So this is by design. So don't get frustrated when you've got it kind of like where you want it and you're playing with the levels. Uh, figure out the different levels you want, go with it, then make your adjustments. Because uh, this is going to reset you so you don't crash. So this will work on slower PCs as well, just fine. But you just got to give it a second. Now... I, with that function, that's what this is. This is the uh, the output for that. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to add a new enum option. I'm going to just copy that, and I'll change the nomenclature here to cracks level 3 or pro. And I want to come over and I want to grab my properties, close the node tree area here, and I'll go to the pro presets, and I have to add that here too. So I've got a lot of work to do on this, guys. Don't worry, uh, it will come and be released very soon. So level three pro is now in the enum. It's also here. And now I've got to tie that in. So I'll tie that in right here. I need my update tag for this. Uh, so it updates the UI. And then over here, it refreshes the view. So everything um, is consistent. So now with these cracks over here the gap is what I'm changing so I've got 0.1 I actually want that to be 0.08 because that was a little bit bigger and this one can be 
1.1 and I think that's good I'm gonna leave the scale the same there's a lot of other things here I'm gonna save this then I want to pull up my console let's do a compile here and then we'll look and everything compiled good so that's nice and now over here I'm gonna have level 3 and uh, let's turn off the explode for now just kind of be careful you know you slow your PC down this is work the workflow is pretty good if you keep your countdown keep your recursion factor down and keep your um, your level oh also that's a subsurf so be careful with that guys I might change that from level to subsurf but you guys kind of know you should know what it is uh, so now with this if I go through the presets I'll have invisible cracks which I didn't actually fix let's see if we just put this to put it to zero and we'll select invisible cracks and I do have one little dev error here because I don't have the output I want uh, for the other gap so I've got to kind of fix that put that here and because of connecting noodles like this with the uh, this add-on development software, it kind of does that. It will um, crash sometimes, we don't want that. And let's go back and I need to grab the actual minimum. So here we go, I'm gonna grab that property, tag that in, make that work on the active object. And I definitely want to output this, but I need this to be above the max. So let's plug that in. So now that factors out there and I can correct this to min and save it. I'll recompile this real quick. That looks cool. And so now, and you won't see the thing yet because I have not changed it and I'll have to update all of these. I'll actually pause the video, update them all, and then I'll show you the results. All right, so I got all that worked out. What I did is I just zeroed out the min max here. Uh, I put 0 0.01 here, 0 0.02 for the next level, and then for cracks 3, 0 0.03 kind of matches. Nice, it's an unintentional uh, match, doesn't matter. So here's invisible cracks, there's level 1 cracks, there's level 2 and 3. And you'll have these, and you'll be able to animate that, you know, however you want, if you wish. And yeah, it's pretty cool. So, and you can always do your keyframes over here if you want. I've got the keyframe set up in the UI, so it's the same thing. You don't have to dig back in. Uh, that's about it. Now, a couple of things to note, and this will be pretty much a thorough tutorial. There'll be more later, but if we jump in a wireframe, you want to triangulate that, you can do that. So you can do um, different things, make it more compatible with like a game asset. Uh, auto convex, very self-explanatory. And if you want to delete anything that is outside of the points that are created like um, if there's like little hanging pieces that are hanging on you can do that you can kind of delete those outside pieces um, that's actually running pretty smooth so if I don't delete this it takes a second because it's working with the boolean nodes inside of the geometry nodes you kind of got to have a little bit of patience if you're doing this with heavier recursions and heavier counts uh, but if you do have some like little hangers and bangers on the outside, you can do a delete here. You can separate the mesh islands, triangulate, separate the loose parts, export, do all kind of cool stuff. But I'll have more tutorial tutorials on this later. I appreciate you guys watching. This is on Blender Market. I'm going to also have it on my Patreon at some point. And I will have lots of upgrades coming with this. Like I said, the curve cracks and everything else. So I really appreciate you guys. I'll see you on the next one. Check it out in the comments, there'll be a link.